Hi, ladies and gentlemen, and 12.2 is entitled uh, States of Matter. Um, you're probably all familiar with the different states that matter can be in. It could be a solid, it can be a liquid, it can be a gas. Uh, but what makes a solid a solid? What, what makes a solid different than a liquid? How do you make a liquid into a solid? Are there other states? How do we convert? into another state? How much energy does it take? These are all the questions that we're going to answer today in this part. I wanted to first start us off with a couple videos because I love videos. This first one, just uh, my friend Veritasium talking about the different states of matter. Basically fixed in place. They form a crystal lattice. Where they uh, accumulate. They coagulate. Coagulate is not the technical term for it, but everyone was on the right track. In ice, the water molecules are basically fixed in place. They form a crystal lattice where their only motion is vibrating. So what happens if we heat up the ice? Like, how, what happens when, like, a solid melts? Um, they all bounce out and What are we talking about? Melt. What, what is they? What are they doing? Well, like in science, you draw little circles. What are those little circles? Oxygen. Are no. they just oxygen? Hydrogen, oxygen, and the two. And the two. <laughs> the temperature is higher. So, so the particles, they're less stable. Yeah. Less stable? It's not stable. Less less more free to move around. That sounds right. So they become separate and they are allowed to move around. And in gas, maybe they're further apart. Is that it? Is that what we're... Okay. This okay, is yeah, fantastic. That, that this makes guy sense. has nailed it. All right, that makes sense. That's now. awesome. All right. So in liquid water, the water molecules not only vibrate, they can also rotate and slide past each other. And this is what allows the substance to flow. At even higher temperatures, the water molecules become free of that liquid and turn into water vapor. In that state, they are very, very far apart and moving very quickly. So the major differences between solid, liquid, and gas are the motion of the particles and the distance between them. So there it is, the solid, the liquid, the gas. Now there, is, there are four states that scientists recognize as the four fundamental states. Solid, if you heat up a solid, you get a liquid. If you heat liquid further, you get a gas. If you continue to heat a gas, you get what's called a plasma. A plasma. Um, and he goes on and he makes a plasma with a grape. He puts a grape a plastic container, which seemed to do much better. inside of yeah. a microwave, <laughs> just totally and he puts a plastic, plastic container, container on top of it. Plastic container to capture the action and adventures. Go the laws of physics! Yeah! Oh, yeah! It's still going! And what makes a plasma different is a plasma, when you heat things even more, they get moving so violently that the electrons rip off. And now it's a soup of the nuclei and the electrons, and, and periodically, the electrons will recombine with that um, nucleus, and that's what gives off that light. Um, lightning is an example of a plasma. These lights above our head, there's a plasma going on inside of there. There's all sorts of other states of matter. I just went on Wikipedia and typed in states of matter. Here are the four fundamental, solid, liquid, and gas. Now, there's all sorts of other Glass. Glass is considered a different state of matter. Not a solid, not a liquid. Um, superfluids, Bose-Einstein condensates, fermionic condensates. It just goes on and on and on. Clark quark gluon plasma. It just there's lots of different states that we recognize, but there are four fundamental states: solid, liquid, gas, plasma. Stars. Stars are another example of plasma. The light that we get on our Earth is from a plasma. Let's go and talk about a little bit more about the states of matter. In specific, I want to talk about water. What I've got here is it's, a it's called a phase diagram, meaning that the three different phases that we primarily deal with water is we've got ice, water, and we've got 
steam up here. Now you'll notice on my x-axis I've got heat in joules. So if I heat something, I continue to add heat to something, you'll notice in general the temperature goes up. And that's what my y-axis is, temperature. Now something really important to notice. When you heat water, the temperature doesn't always go up. Right here and right here these are what we call phase changes. If you've got ice, and when you're turning ice into water, like that slushy mix, it stays at zero degrees Celsius. We call this the melting point. You could also call it the freezing point. Melting is when you go from ice from a solid to a liquid. When you go this way, that's called a liquid to a solid, that's called freezing. Also, there's another phase change up here. We call this right here, this is 100 degrees Celsius. We call this the boiling point. When you go from a liquid to a gas, that's called the boiling point. When you go the other way, when you go from gas to a liquid, we call that condensing. There is a word for when you go straight from a solid, you skip over the liquid phase, go to the gas, they call that sublimation subliming. There is a word that when you go from a gas to a, a solid that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But important thing to know is that when you're going through a phase change, there is no change in temperature. Boiling water, you've probably never done this, but when you boil water, you stick a thermometer into that, it stays at 100 degrees. You boil it, boil it, boil it, boil it, boil it harder, boil it softer. It doesn't matter. It's always at 100 degrees. So, Let's see here. When we're heating up water, we use this equation. When we're heating up steam, we also use the same equation. When we heat up ice or a solid, we also use that equation. Important thing to note, the specific heat, that's what the letter C stands for, the specific heat of water is different than the specific heat of steam. Just to show you here. The specific heat of water is right here, 4180. The specific heat of steam, 2020. The specific heat of ice, 2060. They all have different specific heats. Now, when you're here, what about when you're melting something? It does take energy to melt something. So what we're going to do is there's an equation that goes like this. It's M H of F. H of F stands for the heat of fusion. The heat of fusion is how much energy it takes to melt or freeze one kilogram of a substance. Right here, we're going to use this equation, M H of F. H of F stands for the heat of vapors. Oh, this should be at V. The heat of vaporization. It's how much energy to vaporize one kilogram. And I have them in a table right here. For water, for example, the heat of fusion is 334,000 joules. It takes 334,000 joules to melt one kilogram of a substance. It takes 226, 2 million, 226, 2 million, 260,000 joules to vaporize. It's literally 10 times harder to boil something off than it is to melt it. And you'll, you'll see this is going to come into play here. Here's an example question, an example problem. It says, suppose you're camping in the mountains and you need to melt uh, one and a half kilograms of snow and make it into hot cocoa. How much heat are you going to need? Well, when you do this problem, I'm going to draw out this heat versus temperature graph just really generally, it goes like this. I'm starting, I'm starting down here, 
Well, actually, I'm not starting there. Where am I starting? I'm starting with snow at zero degrees. So I'm not starting in here. I'm actually starting right there. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is melt the snow. The second thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to heat up the ice. Because here's where I end at, water at 70 degrees. Here's where I start at, snow that's at zero. Step two, heat the water. So melting the snow, how much energy does it take to melt the snow? Take the mass times the heat of fusion of water, 3.34 times 10 to the fifth. And that's going to give me 501,000. Heating the water. Uh, same mass, specific heat of water is 4180. My change in temperature, my final temperature minus my initial temperature, and that comes out to be 439,000. Now to figure out how much energy it took to do that, I got to combine the steps. So 501 plus 439 is 940,000 joules or 940 kilojoules. Now, these problems can get very in depth. This is a very simple problem where I start out with snow that's already at its melting point and I don't even I just go right here. It's a two-step problem. I may end up with a problem where I don't start right here. I end up starting somewhere that I have to somewhere down here really really cold ice. So my first step would be not to melt it. My first step would be heating the ice. My second step would be melting the ice. My third step would be heating the water. Now let's say I wanted to make steam if I'm t let's say I'm starting here at really, really cold ice and I want to make really, really hot steam, I got to boil the water. Fourth step, I got to boil it off. Fifth step, heat the steam. Holy cow. This becomes a five step problem. Now, you're going to use the appropriate equations when you're within your steps MC delta T, M H of F. MC delta T, M H of V, M C delta T. Now when you're using your delta T, you make sure that you use the delta T only this far. So the delta temperature here would maybe be 20 degrees because I'm going from 100 to 120. The delta T here would be 100 and the delta T here would depend on kind of what I started with. So just make sure that you use the right equation and you use the right specific heats. The specific heat for ice is different than the specific heat for water and steam. So just make sure that you use the appropriate specific heats and the appropriate changes in temperature.